Get up, get ready, grab your furry friend, cuddle up on the couch, because we have another at home edition of World of Fortnite for you. I'm your host, Sarah Pookie Facelin, and we have a great show for you today. We have five great ideas Fortnite cancelled in the rotation. Point of Interest takes a look at the fourth issue of the Batman Zero Point crossover comic, and of course, we have everything the community is passing around in low ground. Good news for all of you with nice gaming rigs, Fortnite is getting a little bit of a facelift. With the release of Chapter 2 Season 7, you can now further enhance your graphics under the Quality Presets option. So, if you've got the computing power, you can experience better looking storm effects, explosions, lens flare, fire, and much more. But if you're running the game on medium or low settings, you probably won't notice much of a difference. Alright, next up, the rotation is looking at ideas Fortnite unfortunately cancelled. <gasps> Fortnite has some pretty creative minds working on it, and Epic Games regularly releases new content, sometimes even weekly. Naturally, there have been dozens of ideas that they conceptualized, worked on, but ended up cancelling for one reason or another. Today, we'll be taking you through the top 5 ideas Fortnite ended up cancelling. At number 5, we have the Golden Umbrella. When Fortnite first released, getting a Victory Umbrella was an incredible feeling. If you had just started playing, you would deliberately avoid landing near someone who had the Umbrella. When the game exploded in popularity and everyone started getting quick wins, the Umbrella lost its value and became the standard glider instead of a symbol of skill. At this point, a lot of players suggested Epic make umbrellas of different rarities based on how many wins the player had. 50 wins in a season would reward a Silver Umbrella, and 100 wins in a season would would give you a golden one. Well, Epic seems to have given this a thought because shortly after that, golden umbrellas were found in the game files. At number 4 on our list is the Eye of the Storm Tracker. This was a rare backpack that was accidentally released for a few hours in Chapter 1. It took up one item slot in your inventory and wearing it would let you know where the next storm circle was headed. While it was a great advantage to plan your rotations, it was just not worth the one slot. The tracker was taken out of the game quickly for unknown reasons. A few seasons later, we got the Storm Scout Sniper that also let you know the next storm circle while being a decent sniper rifle that was worth carrying. At number 3, we have the IT crossover. IT is the movie adaptation of Stephen King's amazing horror novel, and the story features a scary clown that is haunting a city and hurting kids. The makers of the movie decided to do a small promotional event through Fortnite where a few sewers around the map had balloons attached to them. Popping the balloons would play Pennywise the clown's signature laugh. While that was all the crossover had for us, leaked files revealed special challenges and an actual Pennywise skin that would have sold very well. What's funny is is that Pennywise does a dance in the movie that is very similar to the Take the L emote. Number 2 on our list is the Mini Uzi, a machine pistol. The Mini Uzi is an automatic pistol that feels very similar to an SMG and was never officially released. However, it has still made three appearances in the game. It was first added to the game around Season 7, but it was first seen in the game during the Solid Gold mode in Season X where it was taken out after a day. It was then seen in Chapter 2 Season 2 where you could see it on a bulletin board in the main menu. The third time, it was added to the game in an unvaulted LT also by accident. The gun isn't overpowered, nor is it really weak. It feels like it should be in the game, but for some reason, Epic won't add it for good. Finally, at number 1, we have the free-to-play release of Save the World. The PvE mode that started it all goes way back to 2011, and when it finally released in 2017, it only got a few months before the Battle Royale mode came out. Throughout 2017 and 2018, Epic maintained that Save the World would be going free-to-play by the end of 2018, but it never happened. Battle Royale became such a massive success that a lot of the workforce was shifted from PvE to PvP. Even today, if you go back and check out the old PvE dev updates, you can look up some of the Epic employees' names and you'll find them working on the Battle Royale mode today. It was a good business decision, but a bad one for Save the World, whose development kept getting slower and slower. The free-to-play release kept getting delayed for years until 2020, when Epic finally declared that the mode would remain a premium experience. Save the World is a fun game, but it doesn't have much going on, and even aside from the free-to-play release, we can only wonder just how different it would have been today if not for Battle Royale. Hello, 
and welcome to another edition of Playing with Pooks. It is I, Pookieface underscore. You may notice that I am using a different skin this week. If you did not know this, there are a lot of cool skins in the item shop right now. Hashtag not sponsored, um, but if you want to cop them, all the DC ones are here. I highly recommend checking them out. They're pretty great. What I thought that I would do today is talk a little bit about the creative modes. Um, but these three sound really neat, and I figured we would just hop in. First one, basically uh, just the rundown. Four teams face off in Arena Showdown. Each player wields powerful legendary weapons. Use weapons. Choose your weapon. Oh boy. Where's my team at? Team? Mad Titan 91, not today, buddy. Bye bye. Oh, it's gonna get very high. This is very good. Woo! I got edited on. I don't know what's the pity are. Go for like ultimate height. Oh, dude, I'm toast here, I think. Ow. No! Leave me alone. Oh my god, that guy just disappeared into a puff of smoke. I am getting out of here. I'm getting sniped at from sources unknown. No! Oh. Oh. I am the all powerful one now. Yes. Sword boy. Oh, not so fun now when I'm the one holding the sword, is it? This sword sucks! Give me my gun back! <laughs> so this one, um, you basically just eliminate your opponents turn gold coins, use those coins to upgrade your weapons, and beat the enemy pirates. Seems pretty straightforward. Are you insane? Oh my god. They're trying to invade! Push them out! Ah! Not today, Batman! He thought he could get me. I said no! I still don't understand fully what this power up does. Oh. <laughs> Who needs power ups when you put a sniper in my head? Oh. We'll try this last one color switch. Watch out for the disappearing colors and survive until the end, and the color switch all can by Team Unite. A color will be picked at the start of each phase. You must stand on the matching tile in order to survive. The game goes faster and faster as time goes on. Be the last standing twin. And then, ooh, there's movement applied to you, so you slide. Beware. Stand where there's a good mix of colors, and then that way you don't have to move very far. Rip. Bye, guys. Oh, shoot. Okay, you can jump. That was a close one. You almost didn't make it. 
gosh, he almost didn't make it over there! This guy is cutting it close. It's a 1v1. Oh my god, did I do it? Did I win? Yes! <gasps> That's awesome! Alright, you guys... You guys get the get the idea of that so those are the three creative ltms that are in the game right now made by the community again i think it's great that epic has uh you know given players of fortnite the creative platform to just for lack of a better word be creative and showcase their talents and what they're they're having fun doing with their friends so uh hopefully you guys enjoyed this one i will see you next time in playing with pooks Bye bye. Oh, okay. Sean, I'm gonna him. Yeah. Nice, Sean. thank you. He's out of mats. That's why he's out of mats. Yeah. Oh, he's got some. Oh! He's got it. No! Oh, no! Yes! Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Shot. Ready? Come over here. Hit him. As I put him up. With your bow. Do you have a bow? Yeah. Ready? Out of there. You come to me. I'll shoot him up. Meet him out of the air. I'm doing it. Just broke the way. You get a chance. Well, that's who the better twin is. Wait, did you just clip them both? Oh my god. Ain't nothing better than a cold pop for you American friend soda and a couple of hot drops. But low ground comes in at a close second. First up, Cinema of Gaming has a pretty close encounter. I guess that's one way to avoid the storm. Next, karma check on aisle three, courtesy of Deadly Psych.
Is there anybody that plays this game that actually likes the donkey laugh or are we just using it to get in the heads of our opponents at this point? Moving on, James 4 King can't seem to find something. Uh, excuse me, can we get a zero point up here? No? If all else fails, blame Peely or Jonesy. Guarantee one of them took it and hit it. Next up, Xbox Live 1239 finds a way to launch yourself further while you're swimming. I'm pretty sure Flipper would be jealous of that dolphin dive. Finally, Slade New Kick 117 encounters a player who has run into one too many aliens or can't find an outhouse. Is that running speed or walking speed? That's definitely the, I have to use the potty walk. <laughs> Moving on, we have issue number four of the Batman Cross Zero Point comic in Point of Interest. The Fortnite Batman Zero Point issue number four crossover is here, and I'm not kidding you, but it contains the biggest lore revelations in the history of Fortnite. Be sure to check out our previous episodes for the first three issues of the Fortnite Batman crossover series. In the fourth issue, we finally get answers to some of Fortnite's missing pieces. What is the loop? What are the underground bunkers? Do you open them? And how are they connected to the I.O.? We also get to know more about the nature of the Fortnite universe and more information on how the loop works. Today, we'll be taking you through the comic, its hidden secrets, and how this issue has changed the world of Fortnite forever. We start off from where Batman had exited the loop and found Snake Eyes holding Catwoman hostage. They are now on a version of the island where the storm doesn't close in and there is no quest for being the last one standing. Catwoman had escaped earlier by deliberately losing a match, and Snake Eyes had been eliminated by Batman. As Batman doesn't recognize her yet, she does a hand gesture that does not mean an impending Spider-Man crossover. According to American Sign Language, it means, I love of you. When the duo tries fighting him off, he claims to be friendly and surrenders, claiming that he had to do it because the people who came out of the loop were usually hostile. Batman regains his memories from his time in the loop, and Snake Eyes doesn't take advantage of his moment of weakness to attack. Suddenly, a bunch of other characters who have escaped the loop arrive. Note that these skins have been in the game at different points in time, and these timelines match the point at which the respective characters escape the loop. For example, Eternal Voyager escaped the loop in Season X. Among these characters is a renegade raider. Renegade Raider says she has been there for about four years, as that's how long it's been since the skin came out. The group agrees to work together and find out who's behind all of this and what this twisted, violent version of reality really is. Since Raider has been in this place for so long, she knows the most about it and reveals to us the first big secret of the Fortnite world. The Fortnite island is all there is in that world. There is no outside the island, and if trying to escape leads to death. There is nothing but a total void outside of it. Does this mean that flat earthers are right in this world? Mind equals blown. Notice how Raider's hair is clipping in the shot just like in the game, showing how such inconsistencies are common in this world. She has seen everything that has happened in the four years since Fortnite began, right from the season four meteors to Midas's attempt at controlling the storm. She doesn't seem to know that the seven use the meteors to travel. Raider also shows Batman an ancient artifact that reveals that people had been brought there from different 
places in the universe. Batman also says that the differences in everyone's biology, like Eternal Voyager having a skull for a face, further solidifies her theory, which means that Fishstick can breathe underwater as well. The group agrees to find a way out of the Fortnite world. Batman points out the artificial nature of that world, and that the only way out would be through a portal to another world or through the ground. You already know where this is going. Since the tower during the device event came out of the ground, the group agrees that the way out must be downwards. Then, Batman says what we've been waiting to hear Fortnite talk about for years. The bunkers that are seemingly impossible to open right from the time we saw the first one in Wailing Woods. Batman figures that the hatches have been designed to open from only one side. Batman plans on collecting energy frequencies from different points on the island, such as the underwater location from where Midas's pylons rose or the spire itself and use them to try to open the hatch. The hatch finally opens and after checking the area for traps, the group heads down and meets what looks like the Pokemon Regirock. They are in a staging area for people exiting the loop and the monster turns hostile on seeing them. None of their attacks work against him, so they target the purple runes on him instead. This is the exact way in which we've defeated the Storm King in the past, confirming that he is somehow connected to Kevin the Cube as well. The group splits and goes around searching for clues in the seemingly empty place when Batman finds Fishstick under the rubble. Fishstick Fishstick had found a device that could let someone access the island without being caught in the loop or losing their memories. In the end, Batman realizes that there was an imposter in the group. Someone was lying to him. Someone had never been in the loop and was actually working for the IO. I gotta say, when this Batman crossover is completely done, I'd like to see some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or Transformers get the same treatment. Who's with me? Nobody? Well, what would you rather see? Let me know on Twitter at PookieFace underscore. You'll have to do that later though because we're unfortunately out of time. That about does it for me, but for more of our content, check out our YouTube and Twitter channels at Squad State. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, here's your Victor Royale with cheese. I have so much respect for these guys. The aura and the Demi on our team.